In this video, I'm taking you all on a trip to Siurgao. Siurgao is a teardrop-shaped island in the Philippine Sea. Siurgao is known to be the surfing capital of the Philippines, but in this video, you'll learn that it's much more than that. You'll discover with me the islands off the coast of Siurgao, and we'll visit a place that hasn't been visited in three years. We'll continue our Siurgao experience to the Tayangban Cave, where there's a surprise for us at the end. Our final stop will be Sugba Lagoon. All I can say is that it's one of the most beautiful places I visited in the Philippines. But it's Siurgao, so let's surf. You're gonna film while you surf? Yeah. You don't know until you try. You, you can't, can't bring, bring the white towel. Prodigy. You don't need yeah. a towel. Have you ever tried? I'm Team Shargao. Have you ever been on one of these, Liam? No. Ooh. I think Liam was more brave than I was to go surfing. Honestly, I was terrified to try surfing. Growing up, I never had a knack for any board activities. I could never skateboard, and when I went snowboarding in middle school, I tore my meniscus in my left knee and I couldn't walk right for a year. I also remember a time when I went wakeboarding and I wasn't able to stand up even once. But most of our fears, embarrassment, and suffering is all in our minds, and I'm happy to share that I love surfing now after surfing in Shergao. So many moments on this channel are firsts for me. The first time surfing reminded me of the power of facing your fears and trying new things. In my experience, more often than not, if you just break through that mental barrier of doing that thing you've always wanted to do or have always held off on because you were scared, these are the moments and days where you feel most alive. Go to the gym, take that group exercise class, try going to that yoga studio you've always wanted to go to, try learning that new skill no matter how intimidating it is. I guarantee you, you'll thank yourself next week, next month, next year if you ended up loving it. Yeah, Honestly. but with a rash guard. <laughs> we then headed to the port to go island hopping. I hope you guys enjoyed surfing with us. It was super fun. That was my first time surfing. I'm excited to show you guys the islands that we hopped to surrounding Shergao. We're walking to the boats right now. It's high tide. We have to walk through the water. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I am your captain now. We're going to Guyam. Sa Shargo no no work, Ibon. Guyam Island, way back before it was developed as one of the tourist spots here, it was a bird sanctuary. After that, Dako Island. This is the biggest island here. Last stop natin, Snaked Island, Sunbar. Sunbar na island. Ivan, our tour guide, was very kind and thoughtful. He surprised me by asking if I would be interested in freediving a fish sanctuary off the coast of Daku Island after visiting Guyam Island. The fish sanctuary hadn't been visited in three years after it was hit by a super typhoon. No one knew what state the fish sanctuary was in. You already know I was down. One skill I'm thankful for learning is swimming. I've been swimming since I was a kid and experiences like these inspire me to push the limits of my swimming, specifically free diving. I saw a beautiful jellyfish up close and personal for the first time, something I'll never forget. The fish sanctuary itself was still barren and very few fish were living there. But I think like a lot of things in life, it will just take more time. At this point in the day, I was over 16 hours fasted. I was hungry and ready for the boodle fight on Duca Island. All right, guys, we made it to Duca. This is the biggest island that's not Shergao Island here. We're going to have the boodle fight for lunch. I'm really excited about that. I haven't eaten yet. We free dove a fish sanctuary. It still needs time to recover from the typhoon that hit it. It's my first time in Shergao. It's the first time island hopping in this area. I'm here with Ivan, our tour guide, and he actually lives on this island. 10 minute walk from where we are right now. He's nice enough to let me film them grilling our food for lunch. So thank you, Ivan. You're welcome, sir. Here's our food. Something that always impresses me about the Philippines is how fresh their seafood is. Oftentimes, the seafood is caught only hours before it hits the grill. The wood is from the island? Yes, yeah, sir. We also have ganga. We call this ganga. This is one of the local seashells here in Shargao. This is included. It's very sweet and salty. You should try this one, sir. You should try. Is it like clam or mussel? It tastes like sweet, sweet and a little bit salty. When we cook this, we use seawater. Boiling seawater? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. You catch it fresh from Shargao? Yes, yes. Of the, the, the water? Yes. Our Presentation. Yeah. I'm happy to report that none of the food on this table survived. 
Can you dip it in the soy sauce? Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. The ganga tasted just like squid. Oh. If you're planning to visit Shergao, I would highly recommend putting island hopping as one of the top things to do on your list. It's a great group activity and if your tour guide is as good as Ivan from IAO Local Surf and Tours, you'll be well taken care of. Ivan planned Naked Island to be our last stop of the day so it wasn't too hot. completed our Tri Island tour. Let's go back to the resort and rest for the adventures tomorrow. I hope you've been loving Shergao so far. Today, we will be going on a land tour of Shergao. I hope you enjoyed the day with us. Oh my gosh, they're trying to bite my fingers. Let's bring the puppy. No, he can't swim yet. I'm gonna teach it. He's messing it up. Yeah, that works. Oh, he's Jeff. Oh, he's Jeff. He's speaking, guys. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> What's your name? John. Andre. Andre. Welcome to the Yang Cave, Andre. Don't wake up the monkeys. Mosquitoes. Feast on me. Power my ingay. Tandaan lang. Tayangban Cave is an 800 foot underwater cave in Shergao. Towards the end of the cave, I found out that Tayangban Cave is also a bat cave. I made sure to close my mouth when looking up. Something I didn't expect when I made the channel is just how much I would learn about the places I would visit. Tayangban Cave is technically not even a cave, but a cenote a sinkhole or natural pit that formed after a collapse of limestone bedrock that exposed the groundwater we are walking through. At the end of Taeyangban Cave, you will find a blue water grotto. There's a rope you can swing from that I tried to climb and a platform you can jump off of. I was pleasantly surprised to find all of this at the end of the cenote. It's hard. Oh, no, it's wet. Priya, you try. You try. Chloe, <laughs> no, you try. Family is a core part of this channel. I remember a question I was asked in an interview that I had when I was in college at UCLA. I was asked, what does family mean to you? And it made me cry. It was my third year of college and it was the moment I finally felt homesick. I answered, family is the people who love you no matter what. Family is the people that believe in you and give you the courage to chase your goals and dreams even if you don't have the courage to believe in yourself. I want to add to that answer and say that family is the people who will pull you out of the darkest times in your life and show you the light. The shining light at the end of this trip was Sugba Lagoon. Sugba Lagoon is tucked away in a remote island surrounded by mangroves, stunning islands, and rock formations. The boat ride from the main island was grand. I was in awe of the beauty of my surroundings and I couldn't wait to see Sugba Lagoon waiting for us at the end. We spent an unforgettable afternoon enjoying Sugba Lagoon. Plastic bottles, outside food, and other potential garbage is not allowed on the boat to Sugba Lagoon. Enforcing this rule has made Sugba Lagoon look like a storybook paradise. <laughs> When I was in a dark place in my life, I would imagine myself living a different life in a different place. In Sugba Lagoon, I found myself in that place, but living my own life. Hi, Andre! 
<laughs> what kind of fruit do you want? <laughs> For years, I lived with doubt, fear, and hopelessness. I was in my own way, and it would stop me from living the life I want to live. If you ever find yourself in this state, try to make the small changes each day to steer your life in the direction you'll be most happy with. The bigger the change, the scarier it will be, but sometimes those big changes and scary decisions will be a turning point in your life. Those changes could one day lead you to paradise. <laughs> I like that. First. Yeah? <laughs> Ready? This is a monster. It's gonna it suck is. on my face. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Time is strange. During our time in Shergao, it seemed like a blink of an eye. But looking back, we did so much in that time and I'm glad I was able to relive it with you, the person watching this video now. I don't know if you need to hear this, but something that's helped me in the past year is truly living in the moment. Oftentimes, my mind goes to the past and hopelessly tries to change something that can't be undone. It makes me sad. Just as often, my mind goes to the future and it seems uncertain and hopeless at times if I'm not taking action in the present. I've found happiness taking action in the present. I've found happiness resting in the present. And I've found happiness being grateful in the present. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe and join this family. I'll see you in the next video.